Om Jnana Timurandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksur Militam Jena Tasma Sri Guru Vena Maha It's all about seeing and in a sense observation. Uh, Guru Maharaj says, Rishi, it's an interesting word. The Sanskrit word for creation is Sristi. It has the RS in there, but of S in the meaning, Sristi, like Sristi, Stiti, Pralaya, Sadhana, Shaktareka, Chayeva, Yasya, Bhuvanani, Vibharti, Durga, in Brahma Sangita, talking about creation. But Guru Maharaj said that one of the meaning of the word Rishi, just like in Gita, Tadvari pranipatena pari prajnena sevaya upadekshanti te jnanam jnaninas tattva darshina the tattva darshi darshis darshan we think oh darshan that's when you go to see the guru or the vaishnava and that's correct but you'll see the word used like sat darshan in six different types of philosophy. But what does that mean? Sat darshan. Uh, darshan as philosophy means perspective, ways of seeing. So Guru Maharaj said the Rishis, they are seeing and experiencing the truth. And by the truth, remember, we always mean Krishna, a person, not the truth in some abstract form. The truth is Krishna. Krishna is the truth. Ishvara Parama Krishna Satchitananya Satchitananda Vigraha. It's not, there's no non Vigraha truth, really. So, uh, seeing uh, some um, perspective, Shantadasya, Sakya, Bhatsarya, Madhura, Swakya, Parakya, different ways devotional way of seeing. So that's, and as the poet said, the deep heart's core. And then it's coming out in the form of the mantra, the scripture, the song, the harikatha. Right? So they're not um, authors in the conventional sense or creators uh, uh, like you know in the creative sense, like I even the, the leading American literary cri critic Howard Bloom he wrote a book called one is the anatomy of influence the other one's the anxiety of influence so what he's saying is these modern re writers often if not all the time they try to present themselves as though they're like mushrooms. They just sprung out of the soil of the muse. Right? They're not under anyone's influence. They're just giving something original, and that's why they're so great and wonderful. Uh, but he says, to be inspired is to be influenced. And that's more, that we can support. Tene Brahma Hrida in the Bhagavatam. The inspiration of Brahma is on account of divine influence. He's under divine influence and therefore there's inspiration. So all devotees will think like that. Whenever someone is offering praise toward what they've expressed, they defer that praise to under whose influence they are. Guru, Sadhu, Shastra, Guru, Vaishnav which is, uh, they're not just being humble, which they are, but, but they're telling the truth. But, and, and then uh, people will mistakenly think, oh, then, you know, we, we don't get to offer anything new, it's always just repeating something from the past or rote recitation, no. Like Rupa Goswami's, Raso Dhamma Kamar Buddha Madhura Dhamma Tanur about Mahaprabhu and Chaitanya Astakam. Then Guru Maharaj, under the influence of Rupa Goswami, Koti Kami Murchi Tangri Rupa Rasa Rangaram. Similar, same, same, but different. So under his influence, something has sprung out. 
Uh, and y you can say, and, and I'm just saying this in a, in a happy way, uh, uh, th that will please, the guru is pleased that the disciple, like the parent is pleased that the child exceeds them. So you can say in a sense, like what Guru Maharaj, he took that and made it even more, right? And maybe Rupa Goswami is pleased with that. Under his influence, something even as wonderful or more wonderful was expressed. He says, Raso Dhamma Kamar Buddha Madhura Dhamma Tanur, discussing the beauty and sweetness of Mahaprabhu. That Raso Dhamma, Raso Udhamma Kamar, you know, uh, billions of cupids um, in full blown cupidity, and I'm repurposing that word, uh, that points uh, toward the sweetness. Madhura Ujvala Tanur of Mahaprabhu. So he's doing like that, and it's similar to Brahma Sangita. Kandarpa Koti Kamani Abhishesha Shobham. What Guru Maharaj says in his verse, Koti Kami Murchi Tangri Rupa Rasa Rangaram, that 10 million cupids will faint to see the beauty of Mahaprabhu. So he's taken this and expressed it in a new way, but it's under the influence of Srila Rupa Goswami. So really to be inspired is to be influenced and that is a good thing. But those who lack humility cannot uh, accept that. Humility defined as the perceived proximity uh, of greatness, of that which is greater than yourself. That uh, floods the heart with genuine feelings of humility. The perception of the proximity of greatness, that which is greater than you. Right? So in the case of divinity, the greater Vaishnavas, the scripture, all, so many things. But there are chenmoy threads connecting all of these things. So the rishis, seeing, experiencing, expressing the truth under the influence, the divine uh, current. So, you know, they said the, the, the chenmoy threads that are connecting these things. So we know yesterday there was mention of the the Chinese New Year, and I like to say the year of the boar. I'm comfortable saying that. And that's why I kept thinking it was Varaha Dave's appearance day. And um, but there has to be some connection why so many of these avatars appear on their calendar, their forms, Kurma, you know, Nisringa, Tiger, Lion, uh, Matsya, uh, I said Kurma, and Varaha. And we may think, Nana Avatara, Makaro, Bhuvanishri, you know, there's so many avatars, various avatars. It could be confusing so as innumerable as the waves of the ocean, Veda Vyas says in the beginning of the Bhagavatam. Or maybe it was uh, Shonak or Rishi, but it's in the Bhagavatam, the different tellings. And saying, so then 24 are identified. But we know Jayadev Goswami and Gita Govinda, from which the Das Avatara Stotram uh, is extracted, appears, has identified 10 principal ones. And interesting, Srila Rupa Goswami and his Hangsa Dutta, the gopis talk about them, but in another way. You know, it's so beautiful. What they say, someone could think is offensive, you know, but it's, it's bomb above. It's sweet op opposition man, where they're saying like, 
you know, the, the, as much uh, you, um, the girl, meaning Radharani, because Hansa Dude is spoken by Lalita to a swan to take a message to Krishna in Matra, saying, does he ever remember the two syllables Rad, Ha? <laughs> but she says that, um, and the girl with her heart and the prem as, you know, the hook uh, was the prem and the heart was there. And then what did Krishna do? He took, ate the bait and left the hook, not captured. And as Kurama, that girl, she gave everything to him. And what did he do? Withdraw his beautiful limbs within his form and show a hard shell. So she's going through Das avatars in another way. Gopi vision, they can do that. Uh, but meanwhile, back on earth, and more specifically, Varaha, um, we're told in various pastimes that Varahadev rescues the earth. Seems a simple enough expression. But how does that, that, that should connect if we say there are chinmoy threads connecting everything? And why Krishna? And so in Bhagavad Gita, he says, Yada Yada Hi Dharmasya. Glani Bhavati Bharata Abhutanam Adharmasya Tadatmanam Sri Jamyaham. Whenever, we know what it says, I'm just going to say it in a different way. You know, at the point where religion becomes your religion, at that time he needs to come down. Or some avatar, representative, etc. Because as we thought, Prakriti by Chitra. Uh, uh, parampar jena prakriti by jitra. The truth given, and Bhaktivinoda Thakur says in the Bhagavad, and its purity in the beginning, but then it's modified, Uddhava, 11th canto, modified by the temperament of the receivers, and then it gradually starts moving away from that. Uh, like the classic uh, pl um, um, what do you call it? exercise in journalism class, where, say, there's four rows, ten students in each row, and the teacher will go and tell the f student in the first row, so whisper something to them. And then they have to turn around and tell the next student, next, next, and then go up and down the row like this, and then they get to the end. And then what she does is, says, before the class, they have the last student say, and what, what were you told? And they tell what they were told. And then they ask the first student what they were told, and then everybody breaks out in laughter. It just turned into something else in the telling, right? modified by the temperament of the receiver, right? minimally, what to speak of other things. So uh, he says, I will appear at those times. And also, paritranaya sarunam vinashaya chuduskritam dharma sangsta panartaya sambhavami juge juge. Repeatedly, yuga after yuga, almost like a hint of yuga avatars. Yuge yuge. But yuga avatars, lila avatars, purusha avatars, guna avatars. Um, you know, Shaktivesh avatars, Manvantars. Uh, you know, there's like a half a million Manvantars in a, you know, in a certain time period. <laughs> so he says in Gita, what we take to be general principles are laid down there. But our charges, they can extract from there something more specific or a deeper level reading, like Guru Maharaj's hidden treasure of the sweet absolute, showing in the nutshell slokas and, you know, yena mamu payantite parakiya bhav, etc. He can extract that. Uh, 
but, but just taking it as it is, it's laid the groundwork for so many avatars. So it's there by inference or, or you know, illusion. And why did Krishna descend on the earth? We're told to relieve the burden. Right? So many demonic kings were populating the earth. It was burdening the earth. And what is a, a visual to accompany that? Like uh, the form of a hunchback woman due to so much weight, unbearable weight of these evil um, persons, she's bent over and hunchbacked, right. like that. So, and, but we have the Bhagavatam saying, the earth was plunged into the nether regions, like the Garbadak Ocean, the southern, like, you know, the Patagonia, of the universe and Varahadev enters the waters and how interesting what is the speciality of the boar that like what is that European delicacy <coughs> truffles truffles right so they use them because they have this heightened sense of smell to find them, otherwise they can't find them. So this is the delight, one of the delightful aspects of Krishna's pastime, like he's omniscient as a default mode. Right? But as Kurma, he can't scratch his back because he's a turtle. Like even people, they go like, can you scratch my back? I can't reach that. So what to speak of a turtle, even more difficult. So he's omnipotent, and he can't scratch his own back. He's omniscient, he knows everything, so he should know where the earth is. How does he find the earth? Through the sense of smell, which is also in the Bhagavad Gita. Punyo gandak prithivyamcha tejas chas masne tejas no jivanam sarvabhu teshu tabak tasvi tabak vishu, the seventh chapter. Punyo ganda ganda means fragrance. Punyo gandha prithvi means the earth. I am the fragrance of the earth. All fragrances come out from the earth, the soil, right? The lilavati, uh, galoka champak, plumeri, that flower, it starts, it comes out of the earth. But the, so does the fragrance of the lotus and all other flowers. So how wonderful is the earth? And it produces all these uh, fruits, flowers, etc. From one soil, all of these things come. And he's saying in the Gita, think of that as me. Uh, don't be afraid of it, or think that by thinking about it, you're um, necessarily uh, lost in some sort of whimsical thought. There's a way to connect this to Krishna conception. There's a way to connect everything to Krishna conception uh, because there's only Krishna, actually. The fact of the matter, there is only Krishna. And by that we mean Radha Krishna, Lalita Vishakti. Krishna is more than when Krishna, like probably king, means queen, prince, princes, kingdom. You know, when you say the king, the, a king doesn't live in isolation, neither does Krishna. So he is everything. Ahang sarvasya prabhavo. Everything comes from me. And there you go. Well, what about everything comes from me? Yeah, but what everything comes from me. Right? And if you see something that seems objectionable, that's probably because of your connection with it. That it turned into something else temporarily. <laughs> uh, like the the, per, the, uh, the man who uh, takes the prasad very happily or whatever and then later when the consequence of eating 
reaches its ultimate stage of elimination, uh, he's upset at the foulness of the situation. And, uh, uh, you know, it's a Bengali joker thing. But then what he's told is, but you're the cause of that. Before I was in another position before, and now by contact with you, this is the outcome, so to speak. So, as Gurmur said, on, the, it's only that a small part of the perfect appears to be imperfect for some time. It's actually like a mystical thing how this happens. As Oscar Wilde said, the real mysterious thing is all of this. You know, what, what we see, what's visible, that's mysterious. <laughs> like how did uh, chit get converted into all this stuff? Uh, but still, uh, so punyoganda, the, the original favorite. So through the sense of smell, he locates the earth. Right? That's what we're told. Like searching, then traces it all the way to the Garbhadak Ocean, and there meets Hiranyaksha. They battle, and Varahadev wins, and then lifts up the earth with his tusk and puts her back in orbit in her rightful position. Right. So, at the time of the appearance of Krishna, although his pastimes are manifold, uh, uh, multidimensional, and uh, purpose and expression, still a similar situation has evolved, uh, evolved, devolved. And the earth is again in a, a um, um, what's the word? Pardon me? Well, No, I mean, because we don't want to imply that the earth has become the greater, but and they, I just can't think of the word. But as I said initially, she is burdened and in and, and a sad uh, position, an unhappy one. Uh, and so Krishna, Although we know ultimately the Bhagavatam culminates in his divine play with Radharani and Brother Gopi, still his appearance, his pastimes with Nanda Yashoda, then with the cowherd boys, you know, Kumar, uh, Poganda, then Kishore. But on the way to the uh, Kishore pastimes, well, afterwards actually, but all part of this that um, we know to plunge partially, to plunge the gopis' hearts in the depths of separation where they yield the most superior type of Krishna Prem, a kuru comes and takes Krishna out of Vrindavan, but also his uh, parents, originally Vasudeva Devaki, they're shackled by Kangsa and Mathura, and he must go there and, again, Brajajana palana asurakula nashana. The asurakul needs to be nashed, destroyed. So, and everything Krishna does is amazing. I mentioned that Kali Harad, where Krishna, the Kadamba tree is there from which he jumped into the Jamuna to punish Kaliya. I always found it particularly charming that Rupa Goswami says he adjusted his belt before he uh, entered. You know. <laughs> like he, that he mentioned that detail it means everything he does is uh, uh, enchanting, and even that looked good. The adjustment of his belt, his divine form, he has the tree bunga form, pulled the belt closer, and like, see more of his divine form, which is a festival for the eyes, anangotsavam, 
Visve Samanaranjane na Janaya na Nanda Mindivara Sveni Kamala Anangotavam Ananga Utsav A festival of form like uh, all the different parts of his body or like a divine fest visual festival. So on the way to Mutra and Kangsa has scheduled a, you know, a uh, competition to draw people from different places. There'll be wrestlers, events. You know, a splendid time is guaranteed for all. And uh, Krishna, Balaram, the cowherd boys, they're, they're going, they're like, they're village people, right? Krishna Rajatega Kela Saratam Narlila Narva Putahara Sarup Gopavesh Venukar Nabakishur Natabar Narlila Hoyana Rup. The human like pastimes of Krishna. So he's not a Brahmin or a Chatriya. He's from the lower section of society, which means if you set, put a middle bar there, Brahmin, Chatriya, no, Vaisha, Shudra, in the middle. And Guru Maharaj says always that the highest truth is always in the central, in the middle position. So, you know, please allow, <laughs> my, I mean, don't make him turn away. Maharaj, there's a bench there and they can bring a cushion or bring another chair from the temple as is appropriate. Hare Krishna. So what did I just say? The highest truth is always in the oh, middle. Oh, in the middle. It's like Madan Mohan Govindaji Gopinath. Govind in the middle position. 18 chapters of the Bhagavad Gita, the six in the middle. It's just always the middle, right? The central conception of the infinite, the golden mean, all accommodating Brahma, all permeating Paramatma, Anoranyan, Mahato Mahyan, and what's the central conception of the infinite? Human-like, right? Two arms, not 10, not a thousand, two. Right. And all the time, when I was in Loy Bazaar, Ganga Prasad, the original, not outside the window, they can come in. I mean, this, what, she's going to sit out on the other side of the window and not hear anything. Please. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I can just go. <laughs> so then, um, as they're in purchasing, he's a cloth merchant, and he always likes to give limkas to everyone, you know. So there's four of us, and uh, he sends his boy, you know, who's now I can charge the shop, but anyway. And he goes, and he goes to the mat, he brings two, comes over, then he goes back and brings another two. And I, I went like that, and Ganga Prasad, the show, he had some. he said to me, he said, we are not in Vaikuntha, we are in Vrindavan. Meaning, if we were in Vaikuntha, he could have brought four. But because we're in Vrindavan, he had to go twice. <laughs> so the deceptively simple, a Prakrita Leela, human-like, right? They're walking, that not even shoes they're having, the cowherd boys, right, barefoot. Right. So Krishna, when they go to Matra, they're like these country, unsophisticated, like what did Guru say about the brother? Uh, silly, stupid jungle girls. Only he can say that, but he means it in, in a, uh, a charming way, like teenage girls can be silly or, or seem to be. They're mad after this boy Krishna, but if you record their expressions, 
they surpass the Vedas, these so-called silly jungle girls. They're posing that way. When they write, some, they can turn the Vedas inside out, upside down. And the Vedas, when they see what they have, are crying, saying, we didn't know, what have we done? We didn't express this, we didn't reveal this, we only sent people in a particular direction. Oh, what have we done? We didn't know such sweetness existed. So, uh, on the way there, you know, they're like country people, they don't have like the latest fashions, right? You know, Matra Vogue. You know. So they're, they're dressed and they're Gopa Vesh, you know, uh, cowherd dress. And on the way there, um, they see this tailor right, going with the, like the clothing rack, and they think, oh, uh, sir, if we could avail you of your. Um, some of the clothes, they go, what, you upstart cowherds? These are the clothes of the king. How dare you? And then Krishna just chopped his head off. <laughs> Stuff happens, you know. <laughs> so, mercifully, a, lot, a whole lot of dialogue in that scene. Right, just done. So his head like whoosh, rolling over on the side body drops. Then Krishna's going through the rack and handing out the clothes. Balaram, I think this kind of, you'd like this. This will look good on you. I'll take this. They're passing out to the other cowherd boys. They're all wearing Kangsa's clothes. Right? Then they're thinking, how do I look? You look really good. Right? Then they are proceed. Now they have some, they're dressed more appropriately, city attire, although it's the king's wardrobe. And then they see this hunchback woman coming. And she's a, uh, what do you call someone? You know, a perfume, perfumer, someone who deals aroma, aromatist, I think, an aromatist. No, <laughs> th that, uh, the word therapy doesn't have to be there. It's okay. aromatist, I believe. Anyway, Something like, you know, she deals in oils, essential oils, fragrances, things like that, right? And it's interesting, right, if you think that. So remember, how did Varaha find the earth through the sense of smell? How does Krishna find Kubja? His name is Trivakra. Trivakra means in three places she's bent over. She's a hunchback. Why is she a hunchback? because of the burden of all these evil kings. So we find out from Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur, she is Bhu Shakti. She's a partial expansion of Satyabhama, the Dwarka queen. So Bhu Shakti, like Bhumi, the earth. So this is the earth uh, personified who's been, why is she a hunchback? All these demonic kings, they've, they're burdening her, they're weighing her down. But we're told she has a very beautiful face, but she is hunchback. And, and what is her occupation? She's an ar aromatist, right? Like the all, uh, Punyogandak Prithivyancha, all the fragrances come from the earth. So in a sense, how does Krishna discover her? Like Varaha, through the scent, through scent she comes. But here, unlike the tailor, when Krishna uh, uh, asks her for something, she is already offering. She's saying, "Oh, I think you know." Uh, you say when you put the oil on your individuals, you know, different people they react differently. The same oil doesn't smell the same on every person, right? So she picks an oil that's appropriate for Balaram, one for Krishna, like, uh, but. Uh, so then uh, Krishna, he can, he knows everything and knows her situation. He thinks, this lady, she's so nice. And just to see her like this, I've come to, you know, restore the earth to her rightful position. And look at her now. 
So korun, compassion, mercy, and it's so beautiful, uh, fascinating. Then what does Krishna do? With his lotus feet that are ever sought after, right, with his very lotus feet of Krishna, he steps on both of her feet. Like everyone wants to get the dust on the lotus feet of Krishna. Right? Krishna's got his lotus feet on top of her feet. I don't know if you get more foot than that. Right? <laughs> and then what does he do? He bends over and like remember, Vara has, has two tusks. Right? And that's how he lifts up the earth. So Krishna, he steps on her with his lotus feet and with his two fingers, bends down like that, like Varaha Dev, and lifts up the earth, lifts her up, and now she's restored to her rightful position. And she looks incredibly beautiful and seductive. But due to the touch of Krishna, just as it says in the verse, Brindaranyam Svapada Ramanam Prabhishad Gita Kirti. Guru Maharaj pointed out, lest anyone think there's some anomaly here from a, 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 a rasa analysis, that in that verse which says Krishna and Balaram entering the forest, playing the flutes, the air is being filled with nectar, Barhapidam Navdavarab, Karniko, that one. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, it says in the last line, Brindaranyam Swapada Ramanam Prabhishad Gita Kirti. And the earth, the, due to the touch of the lotus feet of Krishna, it is imbued with conjugal sentiments. The earth that is generally thought of as Shanta Rasa or not, you know, is imbued with conjugal sentiments. So you can't have a stereotypical uh, uh, conception about <coughs> Vrindavan. So here, due to the touch of Krishna, Kupjas become imbued with Madhura Rasa sentiments. And she starts expressing them toward Krishna, inviting him to her house. And uh, Balaram, the cowherd boy, they start to like giggle. They're all like, <laughs> you know, because she can't uh, contain herself. She's so enamored. And she's saying, and it's your fault. You did this to me by touching me. Your, your sweetness personified. No, you touched me and now, and when we say sweetness, we don't mean like, uh, you know, in a conventional sense. What's the ultimate sweetness? Madhura rasa. Here's Madhura rasa personified. You touched, you put your feet on mine, pulled me up like this. I am overwhelmed. And then, so, but Krishna sees the cowherd boys are giggling and laughing and says, what are you laughing at? <laughs> He said, I think she is Hasya Rasa personified, and she knows you're all a bunch of jokers, and she came here to make you laugh. That's what he says first. He's trying to save the situation, but he tells her, I have some important, like Guru Devi said, I have one job in Mathura with a fellow named K. <laughs> and or as they say in the Hindi movie, Maharaj Kanks Ki Jai Ho. So he's got to go kick some Jai Ho with Maharaj Kanks. And, <laughs> and so he's telling her, later we can get together. You know, like, uh, I'll stop by. I mean, I assume it's an ongoing standing order uh, invitation, standing invitation. Um, so she is, all right, you know, but so, um, so Krishna, then what I wanted to say is, so oh, then, well, just to finish, then at that point, he enters Kanksa's arena. Well, first, outside, Kanksa has a different plan. One is to have this giant elephant just kill him before he even makes it inside. Right? And Krishna meets that elephant, and long story short, he's body slamming the elephant with his tail, 
the elephant tries to get him. His t remember, tusk, tusk, there's kind of a tusk segue. Anyway, so then he's like, tries to stab Krishna and misses them. Then Krishna goes underneath them. He can't find them, you know. And then finally, uh, Krishna um, body slams him a few times, then pulls his tusk out and stabs him and kills him with it. He's like, you're carrying the weapon. Right? It's like, Rake Krishna, Marike, Marike. This is a gamble of Mari Krishna, Rake. You know, like, he just killed him with the tusk. Now the tusk is full of blood from stabbing the elephant. And so Krishna is carrying it on his shoulder on the way in. So when Kangsa sees him make his entrance into the arena, he can't help but notice that Krishna and Balaram are wearing his clothes and the elephant he sent to kill him, Krishna is carrying a tusk on his shoulder that's dripping blood and guts. So he's thinking, this might not be my day, my lucky day. You know, when he woke up in the morning, he went to shave and couldn't see his face in the mirror. That's always an indication. Or he saw <laughs> his shadow had holes in it. Not good. You know, and then you see Krishna wearing your own clothes and with the bloody tusk dripping. And you're going like, hmm. You know, and then the wrestlers are there. And, but the ladies from Matra, they say, Gopyas tapakya macharanya ramusha rupam lavanya sarama samorva ananya siddhim drigbi pibantunu vinibha durapam ekanta dhamma yasasri aisvaryasya. Ekanta dhamma yasasya, sri aisvaryasya. They're saying, they're, uh, just see, their immediate reaction is to think of the gopis. They see how beautiful Krishna is. Gopyas tapak kimarcharam yadam. This form of Krishna is so beautiful. What did they, we get to just see it now for a moment. They're always seeing Krishna. So the thing, what did they do? Gopya tapak. What tapasya they must have done to achieve that position? And it's an interesting word there. It says, la vanya saram asamordva ananya siddhim. Unparalleled. Perfection, and what do you like? Lavanya saram means um, like if, if beauty were cream, the cream, creme de la creme of beautiful substances is before our eyes. That's what comes from the hearts of these ladies in Matra. But immediately thinking of the good fortune of the Braja Gopis. And we're told, so when he enters the arena, and groomers like this verse very much, Malanam Asinirninam Narabharasvinam Murtiman Gopanam Svajanam Satam Siddhivudam Shastasha Pitro Shishu Mrityu Boja Pite Viradavidasam Tatvam Puram Yoginam Vrishninam Paradevate Tividitam Rangam Sagrada, something. That means with his elder brother. Rangam entered the arena with his elder brother. And what did they see? We talked in the beginning about seeing and different perspectives. What did they see? It says, Malana Mashani. Means the wrestlers, the big wrestlers waiting, whom the lady said, This is not fair. Uh, they were right, but not in the way they thought. Because they're like, Krishna and Balaram are small, and these wrestlers are huge, and they're going, what is this? And these grown men, why, this is, uh, you know, it's like uh, horrible, they're thinking. But of course, it is unfair, because on the one side is Krishna, on the other side is Balaram. <laughs> but who are these exalted souls that got to play that part? We can think that also. They didn't just hire some thugs off the street, you know. They're, eternally liberated souls. But anyway, so then, so he's saying, the wrestlers, what do they see? Lightning, like <laughs> They're like, uh-oh. They, they know that this is not going to end well, and it has nothing to do with uh, relative size. 
they know something about a prakritalila themselves. Mala nam asinirni nam natabara. And natabara means like, like sometimes they say like an actor, dancer, whatever. And what it reminds me of is the movie stars when they go to like the Academy Awards or something and they'll, you know, they'll go, and there's so-and-so, you know, or, and the person seems to be like perfect in their movements and their smile and their laughter and, you know, and everyone, oh, you know, and everyone's watching them. Just everything they do is perfect. It's no, you know, Krishna is that. They are not that. For a month, for, as Andy Warhol said, for 15 minutes they may be that. Krishna, you know, 15 trillion years on Brahma Loka is the bat of an eyelash for Krishna. Subru. So, Narabara um, is saying that he looks like a movie star, you know, when he enters, you could say in modern context. Narabara, Strinam Smaramurtiman. And the women see uh, Smara means Cupid. Here, many words for Cupid. Smaramurtiman. Cupid personified. The women, they're like, oh my God. He's so beautiful, so charming, so seductive. Because if one Cupid is enough to drive everybody mad. Then Kandar Pakoti Kamaniya Vishesha Shobham, 10 million cupids rolled into one, that would just be uh, too much, right? To resist. Ahoitikiya Pratyata is irresistible. So, Murtiman, Gopanam Swajanam, and the Gopas. Just like in the Olympics, like the girl from Izhevsk won the gold medal in the Winter Olympics. So like Indu Lake is from Izhevsk. Avadut Maharaj took me there once. And when we were going there, he thought I might not be exci so excited to go to a place called Izhevsk. So he said like, we're going to Siberia, and it's like, you know, there's like, you know, um, what do you call it, mastodons, and, you know, woolly mom mammoths there, are still roaming, you know, in downtown Izhevsk. And, <laughs> and so I, I think I'm all psyched up, wow, we're going, and, you know, the Arctic Circle, and so on. You know. And then later, we're on this bus at the airport leaving, and I hear an American voice, and that voice hears my voice, and some lady visiting relatives. And so I said to her, in the whole week, I'm giving examples about the cold, minus 30, you know, every example, I'm using all these snow, ice, Siberian type examples. Right? So I say, so what do you think of Siberia? And she, lo she looks at me and she goes, <laughs> this isn't Siberia. And I go, it, it's not? She goes, no. <laughs> you know, are you fool? No, it's not. This isn't Siberia, you fool. You know, and I'm like, oh. And I turn to Maharaj. I go, Maharaj, you told me we were going to Siberia, and all week I'm giving these examples that are like snow-based, ice-based. You know, <laughs> ne uh, negative, absolute zero, this kind of thing. And Maharaj says, eh, it's like Siberia. <laughs> but he thought I would be disappointed that like we're going to exist where is that eh, it's just a, another town in Russia so he sold it as Siberia <laughs> so when the girl from there won the people think she's one of us there's this local pride so it says Gopanam Swajanam Shatam at, at Kangsa's Olympics the gopas and the gopis from now, they think that Krishna is theirs. See, one, as we're told, Rupa Goswami says, Grita sneha, the, sne the love and affection compared to ghee, is I am yours. And that's the mood of Chandravali and her group. He said, but sweeter, 
Marusneha, the one that's like honey, is you are mine. And that's Radharani and her group. They feel possessive over Krishna. So back at that Kadamba tree, when we were there to talk about the pastime, sing some songs, these girls come in Vrindavan every day around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And they're from 4 to 14 to 8, like 4, 8, 12, 16, you know. And they come and sing songs about Gopal climbing the Kadamba tree, playing with the gopis, punishing Kalia. You can understand, they've been doing this for 5,000 years, generationally. And they were so happy, although we kind of cut in on their time, they waited till we finished Yasamati Nandan, and, and there's a picture, and you can see the leader girl. She's so happy, why? Because we're uh, showing some love and affection for her Gopal. Not for Krishna, no. They feel, they own Krishna as theirs. They really feel that. He belongs to them. And they're happy if other people like him. They're Krishna. Like Tarun Kanti goes, Amar Goranga, my Goranga. So they, you know, my Krishna. So they're saying, Gopanam Swajanam Satam means, they're thinking like, you know, he's from Vrindavan. You know. So, Shiti Bhujam, Gopanam, Sajanam, Satam, Shiti Bhujam, Shastra, Pitra, and the, some are saying the uh, rod of chastisement. Vasudev and Na, uh, Devaki are in shackles and they're saying, our son. You know, they're thinking like that. Mrityu uh, Bojapate. Bojapate means Kangsa. He's seeing death personified. That's who he's saying. Virada Vidrasam. Some are seeing the universal form. Imagine that. They're seeing everything like that. The ignorant is all. Virada Vidrasam. Tatvam Param Yogi. And the yogis are seeing that Paramatma they're trying to connect with in the heart. They're saying, is he not now before us, but in an inconceivably charming form? Yang Shama Sundaram Achintya Guna Swarup. Inconceivably beautiful Swarup. Tatvam Param Yogi. Oh, you know, Vritu Bhojapate Virada Vidasam Tatvam Param Yogi Nam. Vrishni nam paradevateti vidito, and the Vrishni is saying, here's the Lord of our dynasty, Vrishni nam paradevateti vidito, rangam sagra, and with Balaram, you know, his brother, they enter. So the Acharya say, there's ten different points of view expressed here, according to the five rasas and some, you know, sub vision. One Krishna simultaneously showing all these things to different people. So many things achieved in one pastime. So, and that, so we wouldn't think normally of Varaha Dev being connected with, you know, Madhura Rasa, but there's these Chenmoy connecting threads. So, he, as he lifted up the earth, Krishna, like in a Varaha Bhav, lifts up the uh, um, Kubja, and she becomes this inconceivably beautiful woman. And the last thing I want to say is this, to offer some praise, that Mahaprabhu has a Varaha Bhav also, when he shows up at the house of Murari Gupta. Or, you know, knock on the door like, who's there? <laughs> you know, like, he opens the door and there's Varaha Dev, as Varaha, as the Varaha avatar. Because before Bhakta Bhav and Radha Bhav, he is sometimes playing in this way for uh, various uh, divine purpose. So he's like, aren't you going to invite me in? <laughs> you know, like, oh yeah. <laughs> Goes in and 
what does he do? We see in India they have these water pots. They go like this, and then they're round like that. They have a spout on. They're like totally round, like the earth. And what are they made out of? Clay, which is. Thank you. Right. So he goes over in the corner and lifts it up like he's saving the earth from the Garbadak Ocean. And Morari goes to that. And he's saying, just don't stand there, Morari. Offer some prayers. <laughs> and it's very beautiful because Murari Gupta says he's not capable or qualified to offer a proper prayer. But that becomes the prayer. He says, if Anantadev, with his thousands of mouths, in the mouths of Anantadev, the treasure is hidden. Right? Jewels of Harikata are, you know, in the mouths of Anantashesh and coming out. He said, if Anantadev, with his thousands of divine mouths, has been glorifying you eternally and has not exhausted your glories, then what can a fallen person like me say? I, I am totally unqualified to say anything to, uh, to properly glorify you. But that's the prayer. That's the appropriate prayer. How beautiful it is. If Ananta with his thousands of men cannot exhaust your glories, then what can a fallen person like myself say? So, um, if we, um, as Guru Maharaj would say, trace everything back to the central conception of the infinite, I like to say, it. I'll conclude with this, because I want to give William Blake some Sukriti. Okay. William Blake, he was a good man. But he says, because remember, we, when we were teenagers, you know, there was a group called The Doors. And we thought, well, that's really like an uninteresting name. The Doors? <laughs> you couldn't think of anything better than that? The Doors. Right? But then when they were asked, like, why is the group called The Doors? They were reading Aldous Huxley. And Aldous Huxley, he had written a book called The Doors of Perception, which would have been a long name for a group in those days. Mm -hmm. right? You needed like a single word kind of thing. It's before they invented all these like paragraph names. But anyway, so they said, Jim Moore said, well, the doors of perception, Aldous Huxley. It was about psychedelics, you know, expanding your mind, your consciousness, etc. But if you under, know, or read carefully, you'll understand that phrase did not originate with Aldous Huxley, but with William Blake, who said, if the doors of perception are cleansed, they will perceive everything as it is infinite. Right. It's a wonderful saying. It's true. It's beautiful. It's in harmony with Krishna consciousness. But still, it's not very precise. But there's a lot of implications. So then we say, well, the doors of perception, that means the senses. So if you're saying if they're cleansed, then they'll see everything as it is infinite. Doesn't mean just like see this glass uh, in relation to infinite, but it means another way of looking, uh, expressing this, is that that means there must be when the the door this, uh, of sense percent of the uh, uh, auditory sense is clear. That must mean you can an infinite that can be heard, tasted, touched. Smell, felt. Right? That means the personality of the infinite, the personality of Godhead. So, what is another name of Krishna besides Govinda and so on? Is Hrishikesh, Hrishika Isha. That that means just the Lord of the senses, but in the sense of like the highest expre sensual expression, the ultimate beautiful thing to be seen is Krishna. To be heard is his flute, the sound of his name. To be tasted is that which is, comes in connection with him. 
to feel every, the, the full spectral range of sensual possibility reaches its uh, zenith point in the personification of Krishna, right? who's Rasa Prada. He's giving that. So, Hrishika Isha, and here's the conclusion, is that Raj Rupa Goswami say, Sarupadi Vinir Muktam That means, if the doors of perception are cleansed, it's another way of saying it, Sarupadi Vinir Muktam And what did he say? No substitute. Upadi can mean designation, rank, other things, but in the Sanskrit dictionary it also says it means substitute. When you stop substituting things for Krishna, people for Krishna, places for Vrindavan, you know, or divine, all of this, all of these substitutions. And he's saying when you stop substituting things other than Krishna for Krishna, then you'll see everything in the infant. Sarvata bhadi vinirmuktam tatparutena nirmalam hrishikena hrishikesha sevanam bhakti ruchate. And this is the good news for us because he's Rishika Isha, Rishikesh. Because he has senses, you can serve him with your senses. And it's not just an option, it's actually what they're meant for. And that's good for us to see, you know, Shrutva Gunan Bhuvana Sundara Svanvatam Te, the most beautiful thing you hear, hearing about him, Nama Rupa Guna Lila. The form comes out of the sound with particular qualities and pastimes. So what does Rukmini say? Now that I heard about you, I understand why there's hearing, why there's an auditory sense. It's not something we say, well, that's an option you can exercise is to hear about Krishna. No, she's saying, that's the only reason you have ears. And that's consistent with Sukadeva and Radharani. Sukadeva in the Bhagavatam saying, those ears that don't hear, they're like a, a broken conch shell. The tongue that doesn't chant the glories, like the tongue of a snake the, or a frog. And, you know, all these different things are given in there. And then you think like, well, that's Sukadeva. He's one of those heavy brahmacharis, you know, going to stick it to the, you know, people who are still attached to the mundane. But I, what I found interesting was that the same thing appears in, in the Madhya Lila, chapter 2, which is a condensed version of the whole Charitamritam. And it's the statements of Radharani, but Saraswati Thakur purports her statements by quoting Sukadeva Goswami. And what is she saying? Those eyes which do not look upon your divine form are as useless as the eyes on a peacock plume. She's saying the same thing, but with this gopi bhav intensity that was earlier expressed by Sukadev. These are the Chenmoy connecting threads. Hare Krishna.